So starting with a pretty broad question, what is the role of cellular positioning? Yeah, th thank you. Thanks, Catherine, for asking that question. And uh, when we think of positioning, usually what comes to our mind is GNSs, and it's everywhere. And if we have that, yeah, why even bring in other solutions? But as you start thinking about the limitations of GNSs, it's great when it works, and especially under open skies, get really good performance, and it, that's why it feels like GNSs should take care of all our needs. But it turns out that there are many challenging situations for GNSs, and that's where cellular comes in. Cellular complements GNSs really well. And if you look at cellular deployments, yeah, they're mainly deployed for communications, but then they have all the ingredients that are needed to get the positioning work. So again, in looking at the kinds of deployments that we have, we have uh, macro deployments in uh, FR1, sub seven gigahertz, and then we have our FR2 millimeter wave deployments, small cell, and then we also have uh, some of our indoor uh, deployments. And for each one of them, they have a unique characteristic that really helps out with positioning. For example, we have massive MIMO with uh, sub seven gigahertz, large antenna arrays which help us to place precisely in the angular domain. Okay, now what is the value of millimeter wave spectrum in the context of precise positioning? Yeah, so millimeter wave, uh, if you look at uh, you know what it offers, uh, it's got two good things going for it. One, lots of spectrum. And uh, typically you know, we look at data and say, oh yeah, we can push a lot of data through that. But then from positioning point of view, a lot of bandwidth means that very fine uh, and precise uh, timing resolution. And when we put this together, and also millimeter wave, typically with small cell deployments, also means that uh, uh, we get denser nodes and also antenna arrays, which uh, give us very fine beams. So putting the bandwidth and the fine beams that we get out of these dense arrays, turns out that uh, we can easily get to less than a meter kind of accuracy with millimeter wave. So it's going to be a very important component of the overall positioning solution. You shared earlier during the demos that purely time-based positioning techniques are not particularly well suited for narrow band IoT devices. Can you explain where those techniques fall short, but also how angle-based techniques offer an improvement in this respect? So now we're looking at the other extreme. So typically with EMBB and uh, smartphone kind of uh, use cases and devices, looking at uh, 100 megahertz or even for millimeter, we talked about 400 megahertz, 800 megahertz kind of bandwidth. But then with IoT devices, which are typically lower cost, complexity, power uh, kind of constraint driven, uh, we worked with uh, 20 megahertz and now we are even looking at five megahertz kind of uh, an enhanced uh, uh, IoT device. And with the small bandwidth, the timing resolution is not as good as what we would get with 100 megahertz or uh, 400 megahertz. And uh, that's where we can make use of the spatial resolution, uh, the, the beams that we get out of our massive MIMO deployments. And uh, th that's where the angular methods come in, where uh, they actually are not impacted as much by the reduction in bandwidth. So the precision that we can get with angular uh, uh, beams and that's, that's what we show in our demo. It's uh, offering at least 60%, for example, with a five megahertz kind of a bandwidth, at least 60% improvement at median for the horizontal error that we can get. Okay, perfect, thank you so much. Thank you.